Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is kind of by request. I've had a few different messages or questions about this in the past few months, so I thought I would look into it and do a video on it. And ancient tattoos, I think this is something a lot of people are interested in. Why people were putting ink on their skin thousands of years ago. This is something that a lot of us do today. Personally, I don't have any tattoos, but I certainly know a lot of people that do. But the last major section of this video is going to be a lecture from Recording Archaeology, and they just happen to do a video on this subject. And the lecture points out tattoos that were found on some ancient Egyptian women and some figurines coming from the prehistory or pre-dynastic period of Egypt. But what I'm showing here, this comes from ancient Peru, the Chiribaya region. 1,000-year-old woman here with symbols on her arms and hands. And symbols seem to be put on people as tattoos for multiple reasons. But today I'm going to talk about a few different things regarding ancient tattoos and then just present that lecture regarding women in ancient Egypt and their tattoos and tattoos found on figurines. And I just thought it was pretty interesting, and I'm sure some of you will. But this article comes from Science News. It says, archaeologists find 1,900-year-old tattooing artifact in Utah. A team of archaeologists led by Washington State University scientists has discovered an ancient tattoo tool in southeastern Utah with a handle made of skunk brush and a cactus spine business end. This unusual artifact was made 1,900 years ago by the ancestral Pueblo people of the Basket Maker II period. And that is a term labeled for these people in the area around 500 BC through 500 of the current area. So there is a 1,000 year span there. It says this tool is the oldest indigenous North American tattooing artifact in Western North America. I'm sure ancient people were tattooing themselves long into prehistory. I think this is a pretty common thing done. And it was done for very symbolic reasons, but here is that tattooing instrument that was found in southeastern Utah. It says, Tattooing is an art form and mode of expression common to many indigenous cultures worldwide. In these communities, tattoos are commonly employed as powerful markers of achievement, group allegiances, and both social and spiritual status. However, little is known about when or why the practice began. This is especially the case in places like the southwestern United States, where no tattoos have been identified on preserved human remains, and there are no written accounts of the practice. And I think that might change. But once again, here is that tool, and here it is under a microscope. It says the tool consists of a 3.5 inch or 8.9 centimeter wooden skunk brush sumac handle bound at the end with split yucca leaves and holding two parallel cactus vines stained black at their tips. The residue staining from the tattoo pigments on the tip was what immediately piqued my interest as possibly being a tattoo tool. It says the researchers also analyzed the tips with scanning electron microscope X-ray fluorescence and energy dispersive ray spectroscopy. And that is the fifth time I tried that line. They saw the crystalline structure of pigment and determined it likely contained carbon, a common element in body painting and tattooing. The find was a great significance for understanding how people manage relationships, how status may have been marked on people in the past during a time when population densities were increasing in the southwest. Now jumping over to live science, it says Egyptian mummies symbolic tattoos are the first of their kind and this comes from about three years ago. But the ancient Egyptians, and usually it was women, had tattoos and they were very symbolic. It says more than 3,000 years ago, an ancient Egyptian woman tattooed her body with dozens of symbols, including lotus blossoms, cows, and divine eyes that may have been linked to her religious status or her ritual practice. Preserved in an amazing detail on her mummified torso, the surviving images represent the only known examples of tattoos found on, e on Egyptian mummies showing recognizable pictures rather than abstract designs. And here is that pic. And there are some symbols there, right there. I think you see the 
Wajet symbol, or the Eye of Horus. It says Stanford University bioarchaeologist Anna Austin was examining human remains of Der El Medina for the French Institute of Oriental Archaeology when she, she first glimpsed unusual markings on the mummy's neck. Austin initially thought the markings on the neck had been painted there, she told Live Science in an email. According to Austin, it was common practice in Egypt at the time to place amulets around the neck before a burial. She suggested that amulets could have been drawn on the skin for the burial as well, which could have been the case for this torso. But further investigations of the mummy revealed that these ancient illustrations and others on the body were unusual, hinting that they might be more permanent skin adornment than a painted design, she said. In this article it says they have cataloged dozens of tattoos, many of which have yet to be identified, but a number of them ha were recognizable and had religious significance. Several are associated with the goddess Hathor, such as cows with the special necklace. And I talked a lot about Hathor in my Dendera video. It says others, such as snakes placed on the upper arms, are also associated with female deities in ancient Egypt. And remember that when I go to the next website, snakes on the upper arms says the mummy's neck, back, and shoulders were decorated with image of the Wajet eyes, divine eyes associated with protection. Images were pretty powerful in Egypt, and the right eye of Horus represented had to do with Ra and the power and protection of the sun, and the left eye had a totally different meaning. But the left eye is restored by Thoth, the moon god, and then it says Osiris ate the eye and was restored to life. As a result, it became a symbol of life and resurrection. Offerings are sometimes called the Eye of Horus because it was thought that the goods offered became divine when presented to a god. So the Eye of Horus symbol could mean protection and power if it was representing the right eye and the left eye. It became a symbol of life and resurrection. But in the lecture coming up, this is one of the mummies that the lecture talks about and why these symbols were placed on the neck is pretty important. I believe everything is done for a reason. It's all symbolic. Theories are maybe she was a singer and that's why she needed protection over her voice box. And that is just one guess. It says here, earliest figural tattoos discovered on 5,000-year-old mummies. The markings include a bull, a sheep, and a mysterious S motif. And here are the faint tattoos that were discovered on, at Gabellion. I think that is the town. These are called the Gabellion Man and Gabellion Woman, where these tattoos were found. But mostly on females that are found. This is described as a mysterious S motif, but I think this most likely is for serpents or for snakes. You can kind of see what looks like a tongue sticking out there, or maybe that's just something on my computer screen there. Let me wipe that off. Eh, that, could, <laughs> that could be, but it seems to be that that appears to be a tail of a snake, and f snakes have been reported as tattoos on women's shoulders in other areas. Now this comes from the pre-dynastic period over 5,000 years ago and there was a kit that they theorized may have been used for tattooing here. Part of it was to ground pigment but this comes from over 5,000 years ago. I think that is pretty darn cool. The kit included a bird shaped palette likely used for grinding cosmetic ores such as ochre with rounded pebbles all of which were found in a basket, Friedman wrote. The basket also contained bone awls, which could have been used for tattooing, she said. Now, where was the oldest tattoo on a person ever found? Well, we are going down here to the border of Austria and Italy in the Alps. And some of you might know where I'm going with this. There is a discovery made right down here in 1991. And let's just take a look at what's down here. Now, right down here, we have the memorial to Otzi, or the Iceman, a 5,300-year-old, approximately, year old man that was discovered in the ice here, over 10,000 feet in elevation. 
There's a little bit of controversy, but he had some mortal wounds on him. He also had some interesting things on him and literally on him. Here, discovered in the glacier in 1991, Otzi had some interesting things with him, some tools. He had a copper axe that was 99.7% pure copper. And if you want to leave a comment on that, exactly what that entails. It says Otzi had a total of 61 tattoos, or soot tattoos as they are described here, consisting of 19 groups of black lines ranging from 1 to 3 millimeters in thickness, and 7 to 40 millimeters long. These include groups of parallel lines running along the longitudinal axis of his body and to both sides of the lumbar spine as well as a cruciform mark behind the right knee and on the right ankle and parallel lines around the left wrist. The greatest concentration of markings is found on his legs which together exhibit 12 groups of lines. A microscopic examination of samples collected from these tattoos revealed that they were created from pigment manufactured out of fireplace ash or soot. It goes on to talk about age condition or strain induced degeneration of the tattooed areas. It says it has been speculated that these tattoos have been related to pain relief treatments similar to acupressure or acupuncture. If so, it is at least 2000 years before their previously known earliest use in China. Recent research into archaeological evidence for ancient tattooing has confirmed that Atsi is the oldest tattoo human mummy yet ever discovered. I will leave a bunch of links below, but this is Discover Magazine, and they map out all 61 of Atsi's tattoos here. And then down a little further, they show what they all entail. Some of these could these lines here could represent age, maybe. That is just one wild guess, but here is a look at them. And if you have any guesses, please leave your thoughts below here. But here is that lecture now from Recording Archaeology. I will leave all their links below. They have a good channel. They go over a lot of topics. And I just think this is a fascinating topic. This was done in the ancient world, tattooing the body for certain reasons. Today, we have certain important reasons, certainly, that we have tattoos. Maybe you can leave your thoughts. Maybe you can tell us what you have tattooed on your body, if you care to. But you all have a very nice day. Um, there is uh, quite a lack of academic, academic study on this uh, topic. Um, but drawing upon this data presented, I'm going to argue that the practice of tattooing was undertaken with the purpose to protect and empower both the physical body and the figurines. So, um, as we know, the physical body is central to how we conduct our lives. The presentation, decoration and permanent modification of the body's surface matter to us. So this is something that Marilyn Stratham clearly states by noting that the skin is the point of contact between the person and the world. It's for this very reason that inscriptions upon the skin communicate to and engage with other people, often provoking particular reactions, conveying social messages and expressing personal identity. So these are just um, a few <coughs> of the uh, 14 decorated female figurines that I studied from the Ancient Egypt collections within the Ashmolean Museum and British Museum. And through the um, analysis of primary data, I found that there were recurrent themes of decorating particular parts of the body, such as the abdomen, the limbs, the wrists and the ankles. Um, so as you can see upon these, there are two types of decoration. There are incisions and there are painted decoration. Um, however, because I've kind of studied so many, I'm just going to focus on the two most significant ones and the painted symbols upon them. So this is the first figurine, um, this pre-dynastic seated female is within the British Museum collection um, and she shows various uh, symbols painted upon the surface of her body. Her ankles and wrists are encircled with uh, lined and dotted patterns. Um, there is a hippopotamus tat um, painted upon the stomach um, which also appears to be slightly swollen and there is also a figurative scene of animals upon the upper back. Um, this uh, also shares similarity to the decoration on the card to pottery. However, more significant 
um, is the decoration upon the wrists and ankles. Um, so these are encircled with decoration um, and looking at ethnographic studies really helped me to analyse these figurines and what the decoration may mean. So the Berber women of North Africa um, also tattoo their wrists and ankles in order to protect them <coughs> from evil spirits which attempt to enter the body through these points. Um, this encircling separates the feet and hands from the rest of the body and creates a division and a boundary between these body parts in order to protect the person. Um, in this sense, the tattoos are acting in a similar way to an amulet in warding off evil. Um, so it can be argued then that perhaps women within ancient Egypt also tattooed their wrists and ankles for these similar reasons. And this is just a representation of this practice. Um, so upon the stomach, um, the picture in the middle, there is a hippopotamus painted. Um, and we know that the goddess of childbirth and fertility is Tararet, who is a bipedal female hippopotamus with feline features. So this uh, painting upon the stomach could indicate that this is an early form of Tararet to ensure protection, fertility and safe childbirth uh, due to the high infant and mother mortality rates within ancient Egypt at that time. There is also decoration upon the legs um, in a kind of zigzag style. It runs down the front and the sides of the thighs and legs and it may be no coincidence that the hieroglyph for water is also similar in this design. Um, so this symbol upon the thighs could have represented the Nile and its association as a life-giving source which is similar to the view that women are a life, a bearers of life. Um, as you can also see um, closer the ankles are encircled with the same uh, decoration as previously mentioned. So the second figurine um, is also dated to the pre-dynastic era. It's from the Ashmolean collection and it possibly belongs to the, to the Nakada one period. Um, there are a number of abstract symbols painted upon the surface of the body which cover the chest, uh, the back, the abdomen and the limbs. Um, whilst the head and arms well, one arm is uh, missing, we can still gather a lot of insight from this figurine. Um, so again, upon the abdomen, there's a specific placement of decoration here, which could link to themes that I've already touched upon of fertility and childbirth. Um, also, the colour of the pigment um, could relate to the colour of like Nile silt, and the black, was also, the black pigment in ancient Egypt was seen as one linked to fertility. Um, the arms once again appear to be encircled and wrapped in decoration, which indicates control of certain parts of the body. And similarly, um, upon the back, there's more figurative decoration, um, which appears to be animals, but because it's quite poorly preserved, it is difficult to um, interpret this. So these pre-dynastic figurines are significant because these provide evidence of the body decoration practices from a period where there is an absence of preserved human remains with these type, types of decoration. So this is the evidence through absence. Um, these pre-dynastic figurines have lasted through time in the way that pre-dynastic human remains have not. I'm now going to um, show three examples of tattoos preserved upon ancient Egyptian mummified bodies. Um, and the upcoming slides are going to have images of human remains. So obviously if that makes anyone feel uncomfortable, <laughs> yeah. um, so this uh, first example is one of two mummies found within the mortuary temples at Deir el Bahari in 1891. So because of the time it was found in and also um, kind of the type of archaeology that was practiced at that time, um, there are a lack of images and also academic publication on both of these mummies. So therefore it makes it quite difficult to study. So this first mummy does have evidence of tattooing upon the arms, navel and abdomen, although this is the only known picture of it, so it's only showing the abdomen. Um, the parallel lines and patterns consist of dots and dashes, um, which is similar to ethnographic evidence from Iraqi indigenous groups in which women are tattooed upon their abdomen and navels to ensure safe childbirth. So this could obviously draw a comparison and indicate that maybe ancient Egyptian women were doing this for the same reasons. Um, there is also a lozenge shaped tattoo below the navel which is similar to the pre-dynastic seated figurine which had lozenges upon her upper body um, and also ethnographic evidence from Algeria shows that it's customary 
to tattoo small lo lozenges upon the arms and forearms of women in order to protect them from the evil eye. So Bianchi um, argues that these tattoos are placed randomly upon the body. However, this is something that I would kind of argue against because this looks like the very specific placement of these tattoos, especially since permanent marking upon the body is undertaken with intention. Um, and the similarities between the figurines and the mummies show the recurrent decoration of particular parts of the body. One final example, which was found in 2014 uh, from the site of Deir el Medina, and it's the first of its kind because it displays evidence of figurative tattoos. Um, however, this is just the mummified torso of a female, the head and the limbs are missing. There are around 30 tattoos upon the remains including lotus blossoms, baboons, cows, and the eye of Horus. So in the first photo, we have um, the neck, which is tattooed with the eye of Horus. And since this is a symbol of protection, it suggests that this was intended to protect this particular part of the body. So the, um, the narratives around this have been uh, regarding profession, that maybe she was a singer and wanted to protect her voice box. Um, and additionally, in funerary practices, the placing of amulets around the neck prior to mummification suggests that um, the tattooing of symbolic and protective iconography upon the body could be seen as a more guaranteed form of protection since the tattoos are permanently inscribed within the skin, whereas amulets are just placed upon the body and therefore may be lost or looted during the journey into the afterlife. Um, in the second photo, we have uh, two cows facing each other, which may represent the goddess of Hathor, um, and there are also snakes upon her upper arms, but there are no photos of that one. Um, so this relates to female deities within ancient Egypt, and these give insight into the cosmological beliefs. So there may be um, certain vulnerabilities of the body, um, therefore the protective sim symbols are tattooed upon these regions and therefore remain preserved um, upon the skin after life and into afterlife. Uh, so these preserved human remains provide insight into the apotropaic pra practices inscribed and incised within the skin of the body itself and the figurines with body decoration provide corroborative evidence to support this. So just some concluding points um, is that there are hopefully changing narratives into how these tattooed women are perceived um, within the academic community. Um, both the figurines and the physical body alike are protected through the practice of tattooing or decoration, which forces us to reevaluate bodily practices and how we view figurines themselves. Um, the mummified remains provide insight into how ancient Egyptian women modified their bodies and created their identities, reinforce power and protection upon themselves. The mummies provide evidence to suggest that figurines represent actual body decoration and tattooing of both pre-dynastic and dynastic women, even though we have a lack of pre-dynastic tattooed bodies themselves. Um, and the recurrent division of the body with particular parts of the body tattooed with similar symbols and decoration of both fig figurines and physical bodies show evidence of this. The tattoo symbols acted as everlasting amulets inscribed into the skin in order to remain during afterlife. <laughs>